Welcome to our review of Fairy Season, a ladder climbing game about catching swarms of fairies. Before we start, a big thank you to Good Games Publishing for sending us a review copy. Fairy Season was designed by Dan Fish and Gavin Jenkins. It features some really cool looking artwork from Sean Andrew Muttonhead Murray. It was published in 2019 by Good Games Publishing. In Fairy Season, players play goblins who are trying to catch the biggest fairy swarm they can. This is done through ladder climbing card play. Each fairy card played must have the same or higher number on it than the last fairy played or be from the next season. Goblin cards mess with things and then there are four royal fairies that can help you get out of a bind. But if one goblin manages to catch all four of the royal fairies, that player instantly wins the game. A somewhat vaguely dark topic, but I think done in a beautiful and tasteful manner. Now, besides the box and instructions, all you get with a copy of Fairy Season are cards. Lots and lots of cards. To see the box and these cards, be sure to check out our Fairy Season unboxing video on YouTube. So the cards include 64 season fairies, two of each fairy numbered one through eight for each of the four seasons. The four royal fairies, which are the king, queen, prince, and princess, and 16 goblins, two of each of eight different types of goblins, and six trap cards. Now, the card quality here is excellent with nice, sturdy, standard playing card size cards, each featuring some really nice, evocative art. Each different season of fairy has its own artwork, and each of the royals is completely unique, and each goblin type is different. Now, while I do love the art they used, I would have preferred to have seen a different piece of art for each individual number. So you'd have eight different summer fairies instead of one summer fairy and all the cards. But I can see how that would have cost a lot more and probably up the price of the game. The rules of the game are pretty simple, 11 pages long, very clear, a lot of examples using shots of the actual game. No complaints. So how is it our goblins go about catching these fairies? All right, well, setup of a game of fairy season couldn't be easier. Shuffle the deck, deal five out to each player. Done. You don't even have to pull any jokers out or anything. Starting player is a person to have last eaten a mushroom who will pick one card from their hand of five and play it. Now, usually they want to choose a spring or summer fairy, but this isn't a requirement. The player will then take the action shown at the bottom of the cards. Players will then play one card per turn onto the growing pile of cards in the center of the table called the swarm until one of the players can't play. That player is said to have flunked, and the player previous to them will collect the entire swarm and put it in their scoring pile. So if you don't like mushrooms or have an allergy to fungi, you'll never get to go first. Nope. But I need to keep my complaints about first player issues to myself. I don't know. It could just be a running meme. Every uh, What I have to do is remember to put it in. I don't always put in what determines the start player. I think I'm going to take more time to actually point that out every episode so Sean can complain about your arbitrary <laughs> first player rule. Just grab a copy of Schwazi. It works. Yep. What we did actually is our first game, we used that, but we played multiple games and then we went with whoever lost the last game. So at least it did move around the table. But again, we were house ruling. Yep. Now the rules for which cards can be played onto the swarm and when are called the rules of the hunt. And they depend on the type of card being played. Fairy cards must be played in sequence, which each card played being either from the same season, having the same number or a higher number than the last fairy played, or being from the next season. Note, you can't skip seasons. Seasons start at spring and go till winter. After playing a season fairy, players will then get to draw or stash a number of cards, depending on what season that fairy's from. Drawing cards come from the central deck. Stashing a card means taking it from your hand and placing it into your scoring pile. Now, goblin cards can be played on top of any other card. They should be placed on the deck sideways, so you can still see what the last season fairy that was played is still uh, visible on the deck. Now, each goblin has a unique ability, and it usually has to do with taking cards from the swarm and stashing them to your score pile, stealing cards from other players' stashes, putting them back into play, or stealing cards from other players' stashes and putting them into your scoring area, or passing cards between players. All of them have a very take that element. Now, trap cards can be played on top of any card but a royal fairy. When you play a trap card, you'll take the current swarm. It's yours, you get everything, unless the next player can play a trap on your trap, or anyone plays a royal fairy, which represents the royal fairy coming in, saving the day by busting all the fairies out of the trap. So it's the opposite of the Uno style take that, where you're actually trying to take cards from other people, not give them to other people. 
Yeah, exactly. It, it's the exact opposite of that. And you're actually not trying to void your hand. That would be a bad thing in this game because you want people to continue to keep playing as it goes around. Now, the Royal Fairies are the last type of card. They can be played at any time. They can be played just to continue building the swarm because you want to keep it going around, but they can also be played to free the swarm from a trap, as I just mentioned. In addition, though, if at any time a player manages to get all four of the Royal Fairies in their score pile, the game stops and they win the game instantly. Instantly. Now, play continues like this until the last card from the deck is drawn unless someone's captured all the Royal Fairies and ended the game prematurely, uh, you then finish out playing out the round with the current swarm being the last swarm of the game. At the end of the game, you have a really simple scoring system. You get one point for every fairy card and two points for every Royal Fairy. Ties are broken with the player with the most Royal Fairies with a second tie coming up resulting in a shared win. Well, I know some folks out there will object to the idea of a shared win, but it's a family game. And to be honest, I don't know what your third breakdown would be like 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 i don't know what another tiebreaker you could use in this game they could have went with player order but then again you're giving an advantage to that person who likes mushrooms yep. fairy season overall is a very simple card game very family friendly due to that simplicity i decided to check out this game because i thought my kids would like it and i'm going to base my thoughts on that premise i am looking at this as a game to play with a family now, a full game of fairy season is very quick, about 15 to 20 minutes tops, uh, with a big chunk of that actually being shuffling the cards and adding up your score at the end of the game. This is the kind of game where you don't sit down, play one game of fairy season to move on. You're probably going to play multiple rounds. The first time we played, I think we played eight times in a row. So, yeah, and as with many card games, they really tend to be the sort of thing, especially where families will play multiple times in a row. Unlike sitting down to a board game where generally most people expect it's one and done in a family situation. Yep. So the gameplay in Fairy Season is very straightforward, right? It's basic ladder climbing. Uh, ladder climbing is, a, is almost as popular as trick-taking in different parts of the world. It's a traditional card mechanic. You see it in games like Tichu, the Great Dalmudi, or President, also known by another name we won't mention on this show. Where players are playing cards from their hands that have to be a step up the ladder from the last card played. Now, in this case, that ladder is the combination of card number and card season, which I actually thought was a nice thematic tie-in to different seasons of fairies, and it works well. This, combined with the goblin and trap cards, adds a take that element again. So you have your ladder with take that. Now, the takeout, that elements can be a turnoff for some players, especially when playing with younger kids and families. A large part of this game is taking cards from other players' score piles and either putting them back into the swarm or stealing them outright. Added to this, we found the traps, royal fairies, and some of the goblins add a higher-than-expected level of randomness to this game. So if you're looking for a strategic ladder-climbing game, you're going to want to stick to your teachers. So really, if your family likes Uno or other similar card games... I don't think it's going to be any more random or aggressive than playing one of those no i totally agree it's 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 as expected for this type of game just i thought there might be a little bit more of a strategic level as opposed to random level there is some strategy though now one of the things i do like in traditional card games is the shoot the moon aspect where you can collect all the things to get points uh that's why carts is probably my favorite traditional card game because of that ability to get all of the bad scorecards where if you collect them all you actually get positive points and i appreciated finding something like that in fairy season now in our plays so far we have had one win due to someone collecting all the royal fairies but more importantly We've had other games where a player gets close and the other players had to make sure it didn't happen, which is exactly what you want to find with the shoot the moon mechanic. I, I like the overall feel of gameplay in fairy season. I felt the cards were well balanced in their abilities. Like the early season cards are all about drawing cards and the later season cards are all about storing cards. And again, I think that fits the theme, right? At the beginning in spring, you're gathering and in winter, you're storing. Again, I, I like that tie in. Yeah, whenever I see something like the winning by collecting all mechanic, I do worry as the designer really needs to a careful balance to make it just hard enough. Uh, but it sounds like they were successful in this instance. Yeah, I haven't had any complaints about it working. So overall, uh, Fairy Season is simple to teach, easy to play, quick playing game, great for kids and families. Now, it's not the most thematic card game out there. There are some good ways the mechanics are tied into the whole fairy, goblin, and season theme. So you're getting more than you would from, say, a standard card game. Personally, I think the simple gameplay and high random factor is going to be a no-go for hobby gamers. 
anyone who wants more complex card games with more player agency. But I did have fun playing this one with the family. But most importantly, my kids both really enjoyed the game. Now, both my kids, uh, their ages 10 and 13 at this point, were able to pick up the mechanics quickly and learn some of the strategy and tactics after only just a small handful of games. Both were very happy to play multiple games in a row, and it took quite a few games plays to want them to move on to something else. So I did like that. It wasn't definitely wasn't a one and done. They both loved the artwork and the theme, and my youngest really liked to take that nature. She loved being able to play a goblin or a trap and, and win everything. She was a big fan of that. If you're looking for a family-friendly playing card game with a cool theme, one that's based on traditional ladder climbing card mechanic, it's worth taking a look at Fairy Season. This is even more true if, like me, you have kids that are really into the fairy theme and like goblins and they're into Brian Froud and that whole aesthetic. If you're looking for the next great ladder game filled with deep strategy and tactics, you're not going to find that here. This is a quick filler game that's great for playing with kids and non-hobby gamers. Be sure to check out our written review of Fairy Season over at TabletopBellhop.com.